Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week we have Paul George, author, speaker, and consultant. Joining me in the studio as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. What is it that I finally get? <laughs> I feel like I'm still learning how to get stuff. Well, that's what you hear, but let's I hear mean, about like, it. As a, as a husband, <laughs> yeah, as a yeah, father. Yeah. Um, as a friend, as a son, you know, and then and then you take all that into the day to day of like work and things that you do. I feel like I'm constantly learning and evolving. Uh, and maybe that's one of my core values is just learning, growing, trying to always pick up things that are going to help me to be better, because I think we all have a tendency to uh, kind of get stuck in a rut for sure. Continue to do the same things over and over. Right. So anyway, that that's kind of the story of my life, actually. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're always getting, but one of the things is you're always learning, and and we have to always be learning. Yeah. You know, so regardless of the business, you, you know, you, you got to be the best you can be. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to talk personal life or like work life. Let's we, talk. We can go both. We're just gonna have know, a conversation. Like, I think you come. From Alexandria, right? You you were born in Alec or a small town called Marksville. Oh yeah, which is south of Alexandria. My parents were divorced, so I kind of grew up kind of both my mom, Alexandria and Marksville area. Uh So I ran the roads around there. Yeah, I (laughs) bet you so. That's kind of you know kind of the country a little bit. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. (laughs) You can do what you wanted to, right? And then so you went to college in Alec. Yeah, kind of, I have an Alexandria connection, some kind of way. Oh, do you? No, I mean, do, do, don't you? Didn't you go to school there, or am I just? Yeah, I off? graduated from Louisiana College, which is uh-huh. in Pineville. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got yeah, it. Yeah, I played baseball there. Yeah, and finished school there barely, but, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do for work? Let's just let's just talk about that, and we'll we'll figure some stuff out. I mean, I guess you can mainly say I, I um I'm a speaker, I write, and I do consulting. You know, yeah, that's sort of yeah. mainly what I do. I, and I've done that in various different ways. I've worked for companies or organizations. I've done my own. So now I, I'm on my own. I do consulting for nonprofits and for profits. I, I speak at conferences and retreats all over, just depending on who asks. Mm-hmm. And I have a couple of books out. Uh, so I'm kind of, you know, writing uh, as well. Yeah, I love that. I've tr- I've tried to do it too, you know. <laughs> Writing's hard. It's so hard. I mean, it was it was the hardest transition for me as a speaker, and I didn't I didn't grow up or even go to college to be a speaker. It just happened. Yeah. It, it just kind of evolved. I was never great at English or really in school. I didn't speak well. I wasn't very articulate. My vocabulary wasn't super great. My English teachers weren't a huge fan of me, you know, (laughs) but when I was in college on Sunday evenings, I would go to church. I started really getting involved in my faith and the church, because I played baseball during the weekends, I would go on Sunday evenings and it was a little downtown sort of like church it was kind of in this kind of inner city area Mm -hmm. and there was an old gym attached to the church and on sunday evenings kids from the neighborhood would go into that gym and so i just started hanging out with these kids you know and like playing basketball and dodgeball and i just destroyed these like kids you know (laughs) i just fell in love with it I, i just love working with these with these kids and then i would just start like giving little talks to them, inspirational. I'd open my Bible and share like a scripture or something. And uh, I had no idea what I was doing, by the way. Sure, sure. It just kind of like started evolving. Like other other churches or youth groups would call and say, hey, can you come talk to our kids? I feel like, you know, you're, you're doing that. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So the speaking thing evolved over time. And I was like, I had no intention of doing that. But when it came to writing... I started writing like I spoke. Got it. And those two things are completely different arts. And I've had to learn that as well. Yeah. It's easy to start a book. It's really hard to finish. (laughs) It's really hard. Uh, The first book I wrote, Rethink Happiness, my first draft, like the editor uh, and publisher sent it back. He's like, we're going to cut this thing in half. Oh, my goodness. I was like... in half, I was like, I got a lot of my life in that book. I know, but that's two books you have now that. You right. I mean? And they're like, no, like you, you have to, you, you can't write like you speak. Yeah. You know, so like yeah. we're talking, there's a lot of words flying and, you know, facial expressions and, you know, all these things that are required to communicate when we're face to face. When you write, 
Yeah. No one can see your face or they don't need extra information. Yeah. You it. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really had to learn. It was some a lot of aha moments like where I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah. I can say this in like half the time. Oh, yeah, for writing sure. Writing it. For sure. You know. So speaking came first. So I, I'm really intrigued about the gym and the kids. I, I assume more kids started coming and word got out. That's what grew into more invitations to speak other places. Yeah. So what were you doing with the kids? Basically just, you know, kind of being a mentor. You know, I was a few yeah, years older yeah. than them. Uh, I use just kind of the gym and sports as like the, the backdrop to draw them, you know, into because the, they, they wanted to come into the gym and play anyway. A lot of them came from broken homes and, you know, families that were not together and yeah. I always felt like I could I could relate to those kids and had a heart for like maybe the underserved or the, those kids that were overlooked. And a lot of times for me, I wasn't the all star student. <laughs> You know, I, you know, my, my parents were separated and I, I just, you know, like I, I kind of like I could relate, relate. well to like yeah. those types of kids. Yeah. I just just started loving on them, basically opening up the gym. Yeah, that, and that's what it's all about, man. Um, and, and so did you ever think, you know, I'm going to stick with, I don't know, being a youth minister or, or anything like that. It was that the path you felt like you were going on or did you find something like what was your first job after after all that? That's when I started realizing, like, I want to make an impact on people, whether it be young people or whatever. And youth ministry in a sense of like as a job wasn't really okay, okay. A, a thing back then. But you could say like I was, you know, at this church kind of mentoring those kids, but a lot of them weren't even the same faith. They were just kind of coming from the neighborhood. Yeah. And. But I knew from then, like, maybe I'll go into coaching or some type of where I can mentor kids and, and kind of grow in that. What ended up evolving is that I ended up getting a call from a, a church in Arizona. And I'm just a kid from a small town in mm -hmm. Louisiana asking if I if I would go out there. I was recently married, so we moved out to Arizona and I worked at a church that really kind of connected me more of what was going on nationally with conferences and retreats. And, and then that's when people started asking me, could you come talk to our kids and things like that? I was like, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> How'd you transition really from kids to adults? Cause today you work with business yeah. leaders, adults, nonprofits. Well, I mean, age helps experience, yeah. you know, I mean, there is a point where, I mean, I think some people can always maybe relate to young people, but, yeah. and I'm not saying I can't, but you know, as I got older, I was less, you know, I was more of a father figure yeah. than I was a mentor. You know, but I kind of evolved, I think, or tried to evolve more into helping, you know, adults as well and their yeah. faith journey, men, marriages, um, and then got into consulting as I got more into the nonprofit space, started a nonprofit, figured out how to run that not real well, <laughs> learned a lot it's through failure. Learning. Sure. And so that's kind of how I got more into the, the nonprofit business side and the consulting side. Got it. I wanted to see other people's passion for their nonprofit succeed. Oh yeah. So you're helping them then. What was the biggest lesson you learned from the failures? One of the things is, uh, you know, in the nonprofit world, the average nonprofit fails within the first three years. Oh yeah. But most nonprofits I've ever worked with, their mission is like on point. I mean, there is like a deep passion inside of them. You know, I want to do this. I have a heart for this. Like God's calling me to do this. Like I, I, I go to bed and wake up with this thing on my heart. Like I want to help the homeless or, or the poor or the third world or build water wells or schools or education or healthcare, whatever they can. And it's like, you know, people who run a nonprofit, like it, I always say like it, the there's this burden inside of them they can't get rid of. Yeah. Okay. So launching that out, that real missional and real purpose centered approach is there. Right. But if it fails within the first three years, I mean, the passion's still there, but it's sort of the practical and organizational stuff that surrounds that, yeah. that kind of makes it continue to live right yeah. uh, beyond the founder or this passion, you know? And so I kind of fumbled through the first nonprofit and said, okay, if we can get past that three year mark, you <laughs> yeah. know, we might have a, a chance to succeed. So I leaned a lot on business people 
Yeah, because uh, the business fundamentals are the same whether you're in a nonprofit or a for-profit business. That's what I didn't realize. Well, and that's probably why most of them fail within three years. Oh, 100%. Yep. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, and then what I've found is like the business world could really help this nonprofit space, but also the nonprofit space could really help the business world. Yeah. The nonprofit space has this great passion to do something that changes the world. And they could use some help from the business side. Like, here's how you structure it. Here's your finances. Here's how you build right. a strategic plan. Here's, you know, these types of things. Here's how you structure your board. But yet what I found is, as I started doing some stuff in the, in the for-profit sector, one of the aha moments I had is like, wait, you guys could actually learn something from the nonprofit sector. We can help each other. And what I found was this, is that a lot of times people are making money and doing business and they've lost their passion. Yeah, They've lost their sense of purpose. They don't even have much clarity on what their mission is anymore because they've kind of just started doing a lot of things and they're kind of working and you know you can kind of hide your mistakes that aren't making money and you're kind of doing these things and then you talk to people like, yeah, I don't even know why I do this anymore. Yeah. Or we don't have real clarity on our purpose and mission as a business. Yeah. That's what I have been, have been some pretty powerful aha moments of, of connecting those two worlds that I didn't realize were connected. Yeah. All right. So it's a big light bulb moment because we have nonprofits out there and we have business entities out there that really and truly don't realize if they were to come together or if we could take the lessons we learned from one another we could go farther, faster, we really survive could. and and thrive for longer. Because you're right, because I deal with for-profit companies and and often they lose their passion or mm -hmm. direction. Clear vision at first, but then it goes off, of course. And these nonprofits, you said it perfectly, they're all passion and, yep. and the fundamentals aren't there. So, right. oh man, yeah, that's and great. If you, if, and for all of us, because we're emotional beings, yeah. passion only lasts so long. Yep. Right. It's going to mm -hmm. it's going to wean off, you know, the honeymoon phase Correct. of anything. And so building the right approach and structure into that. So when when the passion does wear off for a day or two or a week or a month or whatever, the mission continues. Yeah. You know, yeah, I love that. But you find particularly, you know, when business owners usually get to like middle age, they start thinking, yeah. man, I want the next part of my life to be more missional, yeah, correct, make an impact, correct. whether it be on my employees or my clients. And they start thinking, how can I give back? And I always say is you don't have to go far. Let's just rediscover the passion within your current company, your mission, and you're going to figure out how to be missional yeah. within your company. Do you do a lot of that? You work with executives that get to that point? Yes. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And a lot of them at first are like, well, how can I just take my talents and make more money? Yeah. And that's fine. But I think what they're really saying is how can I take my talents and make more of a difference? Yeah, man, that's a big deal. When people, I think, get into the back end of their life, they really do want to look back and look look at how they made more of a difference than and an yeah, impact yeah. on the world. Yeah, sure. Everyone sure. wants that. Yeah, no doubt You know, in some way, shape, or form. At its core, what really drives you? You do a lot of good for a lot of people, but that, that fire has to come from somewhere. Yeah. I mean, my faith is extremely important. Yeah. We all deal with life, suffering and tragedy, good, bad, ups, downs. Like, none of us are void of that. I just don't know how we would ever get through any of that without grace. You know, mm -hmm. just the solitude, this, this knowing that God's bigger than me and, and, and he's got me, even if I feel like I'm not moving anywhere. And there's been times in my life where I feel like I've lost sight of my mission and you kind of like, yeah, man, I got to get back to that. And so, you know, my faith kind of pulls me back in for sure, you know, yeah, that's great. Uh, to that, you know, and, and particularly as a, as a husband and father and just all the things swirling around that and, yeah. Trying to be consistent in that, um, man, without grace, I'm, I'm like. No doubt about it. I'm, and I'm done. You, you mentioned family and our, you, your wife moved 
like y'all are young, moves over to Arizona with you to work at a church. She has to be a pretty special lady too. She's a, yeah, well, <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. There's one thing, one decision I've ever made that I do not regret. It's marrying her. Like I, I've regretted a lot of things and <laughs> made decisions. I question, yeah, like, ah. yeah. but like that, like, you know, <laughs> the end of the day is like, if that's my greatest decision. accomplishment, sure. Then yeah. like, I, I, I'm great with that. But I'll tell you, you know, she, she's from Louisiana Lafayette. She's from Lafayette oh, okay. up yeah. here and grew up here. And we, when we were dating and engaged, I said, you know, I, I think like eventually we're going to move somewhere. Like we're going to get this like opportunity or call to move somewhere, you know? And I didn't know when or where or, or, or what. And she, she, she looked at me. We laugh about this now. She says, well, I mean, you could go, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> You know, that's hilarious. And so when we had this, these opportunities, what was really beautiful about her and her faith is like, she goes, I'll, I'll pray about it, you know? And if, if the Lord wants us to move, then, you know, I'm going to be open to it. And sure enough, I mean, it it just kind of, you know, happened that way. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, How long were you there before you came back to Louisiana? So we were in Arizona for three years. Okay. And built some great relationships. And then I, I began working with this national organization called Life Teen. It's a mm-hmm. youth advocate, youth ministry organization that helps youth ministry around the world. Yeah. And so we moved to Atlanta and I became a regional director for them. So we were in Atlanta for three years. Then we kind of inched closer. We moved to, down to Homa, South Louisiana, outside of New Orleans. <laughs> we're there for eight years. Oh, and wow. Then and then ended up back, you know, this is home, Lafayette. Yeah. yeah so. so she went from you can go to she moved three times <laughs> with you before yeah. she made it back. Yeah. But, you know, I think she always knew we would end up back home. And yeah, we yeah. have no regrets being back here. It's been phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all seem to be doing well. A bunch of kids, right? Five. <laughs> that's a bunch of kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah. Wonderful stuff, man. Who really was your inspiration growing up? You're such a, a man of faith and you you present so well. You have to model somebody. I don't, I mean, probably like you, like it's taken multiple people to pour into you. Got it. To help you. Yeah. You know, I always found that God just provided people in my life, you know, you know, from my parents and then it became to mentors or coaches, Yeah, you know, people who were a little bit older than me. That, that's a big light bulb though, because you, ha- you have to be open to it. Right. And, and people are going to come in and out of your life. People have more significance, you know, at, at different stages when you're ready. Mm-hmm. But I love, I love your answer because it's not just one person. Usually it's, it's a multitude of people a multitude, and they catch you at the right times. Right you know, when, they, when they're supposed to. So. Yeah. I mean, I had just, it just seemed like in high school, a mentor found me, you know, my yeah, uncle Mark yeah. and Aunt Sally and then my parents and then a coach would be there. And then a friend of mine, Jim Beckman, who a few years older than me, you know, kind of married, kind of, you know, modeled for me what, what, what was 10 years down the road, spiritual mentor, Bishop Sam Jacobs. Mm. Uh, I got kicked out of my confirmation class at 14 <laughs> and he, he just he never gave up on me. I love that. And I still keep in touch with him today. He married us. He baptized our kids. I call him when I need. So there's been, I mean, and yeah. there's been people who, when I've ran a nonprofit friends who were on the board who mentored me and kind of helped me along. I mean, one of the things that I've, I think I've always realized is like, man, if, if I'm off on my own, it's not going to go well. I'm not going to get as far as I want to get on my own yeah no doubt about it we do call on a lot of people to help us get where we're going yeah but uh, but if we appreciate where we've come from and who's helped us along the way then we do have that appreciation attitude and uh, i love that man so what's next for you and your work you do with others my latest book called holy grit Mm -hmm. is a book for men you know uh so i really shifted a lot of my attention to helping men and marriages you know just really be at the place that we all desire to be like help me to move forward as a man man of faith a father husband uh let me bring that into my marriage and into my business so i i would always say is like i just don't want to live my life uh in boxes or segmented i want everything yeah. to just kind of you know merge together you mm-hmm. know my, my faith my family the work that i do it, it just 
needs to be consistently on one path Correct. instead of, you know, living in boxes. Yeah. So I'm yeah. really, you know, kind of trying to do that better, integrate everything. I, I, I can't go any farther than to say that's a light bulb moment. Oh, I get it. I finally get it. Here at Company Growth Academy, we've begun teaching 20-minute growth strategies. They're free, they're fast, and they're full of information to help you grow your company. For more information and to sign up for our advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. Let's get it. You know, so many of the people that we have on the show realize that I, I put on this face with my high school friends. I put on this face with men, this women. And the day you can become your true authentic self and what you're saying is merge everything and just try to help people move forward mm -hmm. and, and get where they want to go. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's a it's big a, deal. It, it really is. And it's not easy. No. You know, because I would say it is easier to live compartmentalized. Yeah. I'm going to block Correct. this away. I'm going to block this away, block yep. this away. And, and then I can just live in, particularly for men, you know, we kind of have these waffle brains. We, <laughs> yeah. we kind of can move from box to box to box, just kind of block everything out. So it's a little hard to, to integrate, but you know, God created us to, to, to live integrated like the, that our faith is and our life is just, it's one moving part, you know? So I don't want to live in my family here and, you know, business here, or do this here. And it's easy to compartmentalize. I mean, because it's safer. Correct. But you accomplish a whole heck of a lot more when you bring everything together. And I have not been able to read uh, Holy Grit yet, but I promise I will. Is that what that book's about? And if it's not, that next book has to be about the non-compartmentalization. Yeah, each chapter kind of builds okay. on each okay, other, good. kind of integrate, kind of the, the holistic, the whole person. So I use these models in each chapter, just heroes, saints, that kind of model that characteristic or virtue, yeah. kind of talk about their own life, their own successes and failures, and then how they, they integrated every aspect of their life together moving yeah. forward you know yeah. particularly with with faith as as the propeller you know for that so i could say if there's one thing that was just i think my wife has encouraged me over the past 27 years is if i do my own hard work internally mm -hmm. then everything else around me is gonna move that's been the hardest thing sorry we're going for the record that that's beautiful man. yeah that is beautiful so i'm sure that's what you you recommend to everybody it's not easy particularly not, for guys man. you know like working yeah, on the internal sure. the vulnerability the Correct. dealing with any brokenness or wounds or yeah. you know things like that what we could those are the things that really compartmentalize us and then what ends up happening is you know we're acting this way and this here and this way and this here we're like you know, I'm two different people. Yeah, well, you're incongruent, yeah. really, mm -hmm. internally, and you feel that, and that, that stresses you. Back to kind of either business or nonprofit, what is a business tip you would give somebody? I would say what I've learned from both, I'll kind of go back to that, uh -huh. but I, I'm just not going to get away from it, is without real clarity on your mission, you're yeah. going to get lost. And that's in both sectors. And so if you've, you've found that you've gotten a little off kilter, a little off track, you're kind of, you know, on a windy road, go back to what's your mission, what, and just extreme clarity on that Correct. Okay. and focus. And when you do that, then you, then you can kind of start kind of going, yeah. you know, yeah. forward. And, and it gives you something, it's your, it's your North star, you know, it gives you something to fall back on if you feel like you're off track. I always so. say simpler is better. Amen. I mean, I, amen. it's got to be rememberable and repeatable. I'm talking about that's, like that's your right. mission is just so clear mm -hmm. that you don't even, you just, here it is. Yeah, that's you right. Know, it's one of the things that I've actually said, okay, if I'm going to teach this to other people, then I need extreme clarity on my own personal mission. For sure. What's my mission statement? And I've, I've kind of, you know, worked one out over the years. And then finally I was just like, that's it. And I'm sticking to it. And it's just clear. I think about it during the day. I, I write it and I can't, am I doing that today? Yeah. Am I not doing that today? Yeah. And that mission is just very simple. Love God, serve others 
and die with no regrets. I love it. And then I that, love it. that is my lane. Now I don't always do that great. Okay. Like, so like, let me be honest, but I can go back to it and say, am I doing those three things? Yes or no. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. So sure. I, I, and you adjust accordingly. Yeah. So. so I do find like, even within businesses, like, well, that's just sounds so simple. But if you don't have that, then you just, you just kind of do a lot of different things. And yeah, no doubt. No. Well, I thank you, you for that. sharing that. Yeah, I do. And, and I, I use a phrase called kindergarten simple, you know, and it has to be kindergarten simple because it must be repeatable and memorable. You have a hundred employees, right? You want all of them to get it. Not like some of them. Or oh, most yeah, of and them. you'll go into, I mean, it could be a church, a nonprofit or a business and, and their mission and core values and their vision statement is like two pages long. Yeah. And they, and they did a retreat and it felt good when they did they're it. Like how many nobody guys can repeat know it? what it is? Can <laughs> yeah, you no, say no. it? They're like, yeah, I just, no. Yeah, it's on the wall. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's go. You come in contact with a ton of different people and, and you present, but how do you try to leave people different and better than before they, they met you? Man, ooh, that's the hope, you know. I think you, you don't want to ever make it about you. It's just yeah. like if you could just do what, what God's asking you to do with people and then and then leave it up to God. Yeah. You know, and kind of exit, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest light bulb yet. You know. Yeah. It, uh, it's just tough to give it up and and let his will be done right yeah so you know whether i'm i'm speaking or someone's writing my book i just pray like lord whatever you have for that person speak to them but let it not be me but you yeah, yeah. and then and then i'm just going to put it out there because you could get hyper focused and like well, I mean, do people like me? I mean, did I <laughs> yeah, say the right you're thinking, thing? You're thinking and overthinking. And I'm like, man, yeah. if I'm worried about people liking me or saying the right thing, man, I'm just, I'm going to lose sleep. I'm never going to yeah, like, yeah, yeah. be at peace. I mean, I can go back and reread my books and be like, you know, I shouldn't have said that, or I could have said that better, or some people aren't going to like that. But, you yeah. know, you just, you just got to like, okay, God, it's yours. Take it. Put it out there. Put it out there. And, you know, not everybody's going to gonna like me <laughs> yeah. right. and that's okay it's okay great. well thank you brother this has been amazing yeah, this yeah been thanks great. for having me this is good we'll yeah, do it again. Good stuff. yeah absolutely thank you for tuning in to i finally get it for more information on paul and what he's up to now visit our show notes and don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode hey look at company growth academy we've started a really fun thing we're doing 20 minute growth strategies that's 20 minute videos every single month and it's really easy to sign up just go to 20 to grow.com 20 com. if you're a business owner and you have a light bulb moment that will help other business owners please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.